Hi, these notes are over 3.3 CPCTC and circles. The essential question is how can I use CPCTC and basic properties of circles to prove segments or angles are congruent? So in these notes we're going to talk about circles, what a circle is, and review some of the pieces of a circle that we know about. And we're going to talk about something new called CPCTC, but we're going to talk about the circles first. So if you think about what a circle is, a circle is all of the points that are a fixed distance from another point. So let's say we have point P. Let's say every, every point that is a certain number of units from P creates a circle. Let's say that distance is, we'll call it R. Here is one point that's R units from P. If we, if we um, draw every point that's R units from P, and we keep going until we have all the points that are R units from P, if we keep putting more and more points, all these points are going to eventually create a circle. Okay, The circle is made up of an infinite amount of points that are all the same distance from P. So here's a cleaned up version of that circle. That distance from P is R or is called the radius and it's special to this circle P. Um, if we the distance between the center P and any point on the circle those are radii. So for example segment PQ and segment PR are radii. Radii is the plural of radius. Q and R are points on circle P. And the symbol for circle is like an O with a point in the middle. So that means circle P. The name of the circle is the center point. The circle itself is not point P. It's what you think of when you think of a circle. It's the circle itself. So we've got this theorem that goes with this and it's what you already know about circles but every radii on the circle has the same length. Doesn't matter which one I choose, they all have the same length. So the theorem goes like this all radii on a circle are congruent. You may use this as a reason in your proofs whenever you're trying to prove that radii are congruent within the same circle. If you think back to junior high, you remember some things that you did with circles. They probably involved pi. So we're just going to do a quick little refresher. Um, there are two measurements that you can find using pi and the radius of a circle. One is called circumference, which is the distance around the circle. And that is equal to 2 times pi times radius. Or, if I put the 2 and the radius together, 2 radius is one diameter, so or pi times diameter. Both of these circles, sorry, both of these formulas are on your formula chart. You can also have the formula for area of a circle, and that equals pi times radius squared. These formulas are very similar and easy to get confused. Make sure you know the difference between them. So the circumference is the distance around the circle, and the area is the amount of space that it takes up. So let's try an example. 
let's say that this circle has a radius of 4. Remember the radius starts in the center of the circle and goes to the edge and it equals 4. I'm not sure if you can see that. I want you to find the circumference and the area. So for circumference, because we're given the radius, we might as well use the formula that has the radius in it. 2 times pi times radius. Now what we're going to do that's a little bit different than how you did this in junior high is in junior high you usually used 3.14 as an approximation for pi. Whenever you did that though you were rounding the number because pi is an irrational number that continues forever and ever. What we're going to use instead is we're going to leave pi put. It is going to act kind of like a variable. We're not going to touch it. Um, we're only going to replace r and this actually makes it much simpler. So now we're going to have 2 times pi times 4 which is our r. The 2 and the 4 can be multiplied together and then pi will go at the end. So we'll say the circumference is 8 pi units whatever those units are, meters, inches, centimeters, miles. To find the area, we're going to use the area formula, pi r squared. Our r, our radius, is 4, so pi times 4 squared. Our order of operations say to square first, 4 squared is 16, but I'm going to write that 16 in front of the pi And our area, which is always in units squared, will be 16 pi units squared. And remember, units can be meters, so it could be meters squared, it could be centimeters squared, miles squared, kilometers squared. So this is the circumference, and this is the area. Write yourself a note that whenever we use pi in this class, we will not replace it with 3.14. So the way that we say that is we keep all of our answers in terms of pi. Just like when we learned how to express y in terms of x, x was in our answer, pi is going to be part of our answer. Keep in terms of pi, which means don't replace pi with 3.14. It's actually easier this way. Don't replace with 3.14 or 22 sevenths, which is the fractional equivalent. So in 3.2, you learned about the different ways of proving that two triangles are congruent. We learned about using SAS, ASA, and SSS. You have to fully understand how to make those proofs before you can learn this next thing, which is kind of like a step beyond SAS, ASA, or SSS. It's called CPCTC, another acronym. What happens is, once you've already proven two triangles are congruent, let me show you what I mean. Let's say I've got these two triangles. And let's just say that I've proven them congruent by SAS. So these two sides are congruent. This angle is congruent. And then the side on the other side of the angle, those two sides are congruent. So I've proven that these two triangles were congruent by SAS. After I've proven that, then I can go a step further and say, well, because all of the parts of these two triangles I now know are congruent, I can say that other parts of the triangle are congruent. Like I could say, well, I know that this angle and this angle are now congruent. And I know that that those are congruent by CPCTC, which says that corresponding parts, so matching parts, like these two parts match, of triangles that are congruent, of congruent triangles, which we have, are also congruent. So first you say two triangles are congruent by SAS, ASA, or SSS. Then you can say that the other parts that you didn't say were congruent, which were these parts originally, now we can say that the other parts are congruent, like this other angle, or I could say this 
third angle, these third angles are congruent, or it could say that these third sides are also congruent, all by CPCTC. Just remember when you use CPCTC that you may only use it after you've proved the triangles are congruent by SAS, ASA, or SSS to then prove that other parts of the two triangles are also congruent. And by other parts, I mean the parts that correspond or match up. So let's see how we can combine the circles and the CPCTC within a proof. We have this picture, we have a couple givens. One of our givens is circle O, so it's telling us that this is a circle. We don't want to assume that's a circle, even though it looks like one. Anytime we're told that we have a circle, we now know that all the radii are congruent, so we're going to want to state that. We're also told that RO and MP, those two segments, are perpendicular. So we're going to want to put all of these, all of this information on our picture in just a minute. We're trying to prove that MR, segment MR, is congruent to segment PR. Those are not drawn on our picture. Segment MR would be here, and segment PR would be here. Once I draw those in, I can see, oh yeah, I've got some right triangles, well, hopefully they're right triangles, if the angles at angle O are right. And I know that they are because those two segments are perpendicular. So if I can prove these two triangles are congruent, then I could state that MR and PR are congruent by using CPCTC. So let's see how this would work. Start off with some givens. We know that we've got circle O, and I'm going to put these on the same line, and segment RO is perpendicular to segment MP. Those are givens. So let's just use these givens one at a time. Anytime we're told we have a circle, we know that the radii are congruent. So I know that MO, OR, and OP are all congruent. Um, the ones for sure that I want to say are congruent are two of the sides of the triangle. So I need to kind of think, well, how am I going to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, I kind of see that they share side OR. So I could say that's congruent to itself, but they also have MO and OP that also have the same length. So we can say those are congruent. And then because I already have two sides, I don't really know anything about the other side. So SSS is out. But if I can show that those angles that are included by the two sides are congruent, then we could use SAS. So let's go ahead and start off with MO and OP. I know that segment MO is congruent to segment OP because all radii of a circle are congruent. Okay, and what I'm going to do, um, this kind of helps me when I'm doing these congruent triangle proofs is I'm going to put a little S out to the side and that just reminds me that hey I've already stated that one pair of corresponding sides are congruent now I just got to get the A and the other S. The other thing the other side we kind of talked about was OR is congruent to itself because they share that side. Anytime you say something is congruent to itself you can use the reflexive property. So just to kind of stay organized, I'm going to put another S out to the side because I've stated that two other sides are congruent. So I've kind of used up this first given, saying that my radii are congruent. The next given says that RO and MP are perpendicular. Anytime I see perpendicular, I know I've got some right angles. So here and here, these are going to be right angles. Um, so let's go ahead and state that they are right angles. So we've got angle MOR and angle POR 
are right, and I know that because that's the definition of perpendicular. That told me that. Now that I've stated that they're both right angles, I can say that they're congruent because we know that if two angles are right angles, they are congruent. So now I could state angle MOR is congruent to angle POR because right angles are congruent. Or if two angles are right, then they are congruent. You can write it either way. I'm also going to make another note here. This is my A for my SAS. Um, notice each of these statements has the actual congruent symbol. You must see that in all the statements. I also don't need to prove the statements in the order SAS. I just need to prove that two corresponding sides are congruent, another pair of corresponding sides are congruent, and the angle in between them are congruent. I can prove those in any order. But once I've got all three, now I can say that the two triangles are congruent by SAS. So we could call one triangle MOR, doesn't really matter, but when you remember when you state the second triangle, like or corresponding vertices must be in the same order. So we want P with O with R, P-O-R. Those two triangles are congruent because of SAS. So this is what you learned in 3.2 and you usually stopped here because that was the statement you were trying to prove. But we're trying to prove that MR and PR are congruent. We can say that now that we've said you know this triangle on the left is congruent to this triangle on the right I know that all of their parts are congruent because of CPCTC. So we're ready to state our proof statement which is that segment MR is congruent to segment PR by CPCTC. And that's it. If you'd like to work on the problems that go with this section, you're more than welcome to. Let me tell you what those are. Oops. What am I doing? homework. The numbers are 6, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, and 23. And if you want to know which of those are the proofs, I believe they're number 6, 10, 13, and 16. See you in class.